Hi hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to dilate lines and in particular how to dilate a linear equation in order to write the equation of its image after the dilation. So we're basically going to start by looking at two scenarios. We're going to dilate lines, but one where the center of dilation is on the line, that's what we see in the left picture, and one where the center of dilation is off the line, we see that in the right hand picture. Both of these have line a b they both are going to have a scale factor of two and they're both going to be centered at o the only difference is the left picture again the center is on the line and in the right picture the center is off the line and it happens to be above it in this case so when we are dilating we are basically changing the distance from each point of the pre-image by multiplying it by the scale factor Okay, and we're changing that distance in relation to the center. So here's what I mean by that. Take a look at how far apart O and A are from one another. So A, remember, is our pre-image. Repeat that, and we're going to estimate a little bit here, and that's where A prime would be. Okay, so we have doubled the distance from O. That's what it means to dilate by 2 centered at O. We're going to do the same thing with B. Okay, so estimate a bit the distance between O and B, and we're going to double it, and that's where we're going to estimate B prime is. Watch what happens if I connect A prime and B prime. Notice how they end up back on the line, and we just get the same exact line we started from. What well, asks us here, describe how the pre-image and image compare to one another. We're going to write that they are the same exact line. You're going to see something a little bit different on the right hand example though when the center is off the line we're going to start with the same idea double the distance from o to a okay o your center of dilation that's like your starting point so imagine where that distance is and if you want if you have trouble figuring out where it should go in terms of position you could extend from o on and say okay here's the distance from o to a Let's repeat that, and this is where A prime is going to be. So drawing that line from O through A could be helpful. I'm going to do the same thing with B. Estimate how far O and B are from one another. Repeat it. Here's B prime. Now if I connect A prime and B prime, notice I don't get the same exact line, but instead I get a parallel line, a line that has the same slope. So if we look in this second example, here's the pre-image, here's the image, they are parallel to one another. So these are our two scenarios. If it's centered on the line, we're going to get the same line. If it's centered off the line, we're going to get a parallel line. Now when we look at this in terms of linear equations, we do want to think about the origin in particular. That's a common center of dilation. So let's kind of wrap this up with some conclusions here. So first of all, parallelism is preserved under a dilation. And this basically means that the slope of the line never changes. In both of those examples, the slope remained unchanged. Either it was the same exact line, so therefore slope didn't change, or you got a parallel line and parallel lines have equal slopes. Let's look at our first example. If the center of dilation is on the line, the image after the dilation is the same exact line. When we translate this idea over onto graphs, we are going to see that the problems, if the center is off the line, that it's always going to be the origin in these problems that we're going to see. It is possible for it to be something else, but in the problems in this video, it will be the origin if it's off the line. And that's where the image after the dilation is a parallel line. And if we're unsure a little bit about parallel lines, let's just remind ourselves that means that they have the same slope Right, we talked about that in conclusion one, but they have different y-intercepts. So we are going to use that these three conclusions to kind of answer some questions about writing the image of a line after a dilation. So let's look at some sample problems so you can see what this is really talking about. Number one, the line y equals 4x plus 3 is dilated by a scale factor of 2 centered at the point 315. What is the equation of the image? 
So think about to our first page of notes. There were two situations. There was on the line or off the line. We have to figure out is 315 on the line. There's a few ways you could do this. You could graph the line in your calculator. The way that I like to do it is I like to take the equation, plug in the point for x and y. So the y value is 15, the x value is 3, and see if I get a true statement or not. In this case, I did. 15 is equal to 15. That's true. So that basically means that the center is on the line. Okay, so let's start to tie a couple things together. I'm going to scroll back to conclusion two. If the center of dilation is on the line, the image after the dilation is the same exact line. So this is going to seem almost too easy, like we're not doing anything. But the answer to this question is y equals 4x plus 3. It is the same exact line that we started with. This will happen every single time the center of dilation is on the line. All right, let's take a look at number two. The line y equals negative 3x is dilated by a scale factor of 3 centered at the point 0, 0. What is the equation of the image? Well, let's plug the point in. We get a true statement. So that means the center is on the line. And just like question number one, that means we're going to keep everything the same. And our answer is y equals negative 3x. You might notice that in these problems, that scale factor is completely irrelevant. And that is definitely true. You'll see how it relates to the off the line ones. Okay, number three, write the equation of the line y equals 6x plus 4 when dilated by a scale factor of 1 fourth centered at 0, 0. All right, let's start by checking once again if our point is on or off the line. And you'll see this is our first instance where we get something that's false. So this is not on the line, or you could say off the line, whichever. Now, again, we only are going to be learning how to do the ones that are not on the line and the origin. So I'm just going to take note of that here. And what we said before was that our slope stays the same. So the slope was 6. Keep that the same. And the y-intercept is going to change. And we said, okay, if those y-intercepts are different, we have to think about how the scale factor relates. Scale factors are multiplication. So 4 times 1 fourth is going to give me 1. And I get my answer y equals 6x plus 1. Just so we see that a little bit further, the y-intercept always has an x value of 0, so 0, 4. Anytime you dilate centered at the origin, you can just multiply the coordinates by the scale factor. That would give us 0, 1, and that's where our y-intercept, our new y-intercept of 1 is coming from. Number 4, write the equation of the line y equals 4x plus 2 when dilated by a scale factor of 3 centered at the origin. All right, very similar to that last one. We are going to get a false statement, and that means we are going to... All right here, not on the line. And it's the origin. We are going to keep the slope the same. We are going to multiply the y-intercept and the scale factor, and we get y equals 4x plus 6. All right, number 5. Write the equation of the line 2y equals 4x plus 6 when dilated by a scale factor of 3 centered at negative 1, 1. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Um, what I would maybe suggest, I personally like to get everything in y equals form first. So I'm going to solve for y here. Hey, that gives me y equals 2x plus 3. And now I'm going to plug that point in. So I end up getting 1 equals 1, which is true. So this point is on the line. And that means we get the same exact equation. So you could put the very original equation when it was not in y equals form or you could put the y equals form the one that's in slope intercept form that we solve for as long as it doesn't specify what form and it's not multiple choice where you have to pick an answer both of these are valid answers all right let's look at another one six write the equation of the line 4y minus 2x equals 8 when dilated by a scale factor of 7 centered at 0 0 Okay, very similar to the last one. I'm going to start by getting y by itself. So I'm going to add the 2x to the other side. 
and I'm going to divide everything by 4. When I do that, I get y equals 1 half x plus 2. When I plug my point in, I get 0 equals 2, which is false. So we're saying that the center is not on the line, and it's also the origin. That means we're going to keep our slope the same. So our slope is 1 half. I'm going to multiply the y-intercept by the scale factor. So it was 2, scale factor 7, multiply them, and I get 14. This is where I think it helps to have it in y equals form so that you can quickly identify the slope that you need to preserve and then multiply the y-intercept accordingly. All right, for our last question. The line negative 2x plus 6y equals 12 is transformed by a dilation centered at the origin. Which linear equation could represent this image? So I'm going to start by just rewriting this equation off to the side here, and then I'm going to solve for y. Dividing everything by 6, I get y equals 1 third x plus 2. Well, it's centered at the origin, so I'm going to plug that point in, and I get 0 equals 2, which is false. So I know that this is not on the line. And it's also the origin. So I know that means that I should keep the slope the same and that I should multiply the y-intercept by the scale factor. Now, this problem does not give us a scale factor at all. Um, so let's see what we can do with this. We know that the slope should be the same. So the slope of this line is 1 third. So cross off C and D. That can't be right. And we know the y-intercept of 2 should be multiplied by the scale factor. So look at choice A and B. Which one of those y-intercepts has been multiplied by something, even if it's this mysterious scale factor we don't know, and that would be A. If we had gotten on the line, if the center was on the line, it would have been choice B. Hopefully this video helped you understand about dilating linear equations. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to check out more geometry lessons. Thanks for watching.